Hello everyone from the Novage team. Welcome to today's webinar, VRay 3.6 and VR Scans, New Design Possibilities in SketchUp. This webinar aims to go into the practical details of the V-Ray and VR Scans combo work in SketchUp. And this is based on a study of architecture interior and exterior project. Today's webinar presenter, Vesel Mihailov, joined the Chaos Group CG team in 2015. Since then, he has been using V-Ray on a daily basis and is actively involved in creating presentation content for the team. And let me tell you a little bit about Novage. Novage is one of the largest online stores for design software, and we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. As you can see, this is our product page where we have all the V-Ray offers. Um, put us to the test and come visit us at novage.com. And for more daily software news and limited time promotions, pay a visit to the Novage blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Coming up next week, title block border, question and answers, a VectorWorks webinar. And um, I want uh, to remind everybody that today's webinar is free and will be recorded. So if you want to rewatch it, you can always find it on the Novage, Novage YouTube and Vimeo channel. And now, without further ado, I'm going to share Vesel's screen and start the presentation. Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Vesel, I'm a CG specialist at Chaos Group and today I'm going to walk you guys through some of the new features that come with V-Ray 3.6 for SketchUp. Now, before we get started, let me emphasize on what is the key idea behind V-Ray for SketchUp. V-Ray gives you the power to render anything from quick design models to very complex 3D scenes. On top of that, it renders fast and it gives you the opportunity to design even faster using the interactive rendering mode. Now, in other words, you can spend more time being creative and less time on waiting. Also, we've put a lot of effort to make V-Ray easy to use and easy to learn. Even if you're a newcomer and have no experience using it before, V-Ray for SketchUp is designed to get you up and running in no time. In today's webinar, I'm going to be talking about how I've used some of the new features and improvements in V-Ray 3.6 for SketchUp to help me create renderings in an easier and more friendly way. We've put a lot of effort to optimize and speed up the rendering process and now there is a new lighting algorithm called Adaptive Lights that can significantly speed up the rendering process, especially in scenes containing a lot of light sources. There is a number of user interface and workflow improvements that would help you find things easier and make the user experience much better. Also, there are several new materials and textures that's been added. The VR scan material is now supported, which makes it possible to use the Chaos Group's uh, scanned materials technology in your project. And finally, we have a lot of GPU rendering improvements in this release, such as the hybrid rendering system. Displacement and aerial perspective are also now supported on the GPU. Now that you guys are familiar with the agenda for today's webinar, let's jump right into the first major feature and that will be the new lighting mode called Adaptive Lights. The Adaptive Lights is a new lighting algorithm that speeds up the rendering significantly, especially in scenes containing many light sources. The algorithm analyzes the scene, determining which light sources are of greater importance to the overall lighting. And this way, instead of treating all of the lights with the same importance, V-Ray focuses more ray tracing calculations on the lights that matter the most. As I mentioned earlier, the adaptive lights is especially good in scenes containing a lot of lights. Now, let me show you a video here. And this video contains a side-by-side -side comparison of a scene rendered with the adaptive lights switched off and switched on. So as you can see here, on the left-hand side, we have the adaptive lights switched off and the scene rendered for roughly about 29 minutes compared to four minutes, just four minutes, uh, with the adaptive lights switched on. Uh, this is quite a big difference and the results look exactly the same. All right, I do have a scene here that still needs the lighting and materials to be set up as well as some finishing touches. So 
let me jump right in SketchUp and show you how we can take advantage of some of the new features of V-Ray to make our workflow easier. All right, so I'm here. Uh, I'm right here in uh, SketchUp 2018, and this is my scene. Um, it, it can, it's a very simple scene. Contains just uh, several houses here. Now, now the first thing I'd like to do in this scene is uh, set up my lighting. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me open the asset editor. But before I do that, I'd like you. I'd like to show you uh, guys that the icons on the V-Ray toolbar have been redesigned in this release and uh, they're also now scalable to 4K. So if you have a 4K monitor, they'll still look great on it. Also, there are a couple of new icons on the toolbar, uh, those, those two right here, and they allow us to um, use the so-called VPR or viewport rendering. So as if this release of V-Ray for SketchUp we can render directly in the viewport. So let me go ahead and start the viewport rendering and show you what I mean by that. As you can see here, we can, um, we can render directly in the viewport uh, without having the, the V-Ray frame buffer window uh, blocking our view. And um, I like this feature a lot, especially in the look development phase uh, for setting up my, my camera, my point of view, position, for example, since I can uh, zoom in and out and uh, move around and then this way just test uh, different uh, points of view, for example. So the icon that is right next to it allows me to uh, draw a region and just render just this region that I just drew. So let me draw a region just around the roof of the house and just this part of the viewport is now rendered. Now, if I hold the shift button, I can draw another region, for example, and another region, if I like, just like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can draw as many regions as I like, and they're all going to be rendered simultaneously. Okay, so if I disable the render region option, the rest of the viewport is gonna start rendering uh, preserving the already rendered render regions. Okay, so that is the viewport rendering. We just go ahead and switch it off. So, the first thing that I'd like to do before I start working on any project is uh, choose my rendering engine. So, if I open the asset editor under my render settings here, the render under renderer tab, I get the first thing I get to choose is my rendering engine. And I can choose between two engines that come with V-Ray for SketchUp, that, that is the CPU and the GPU engine. Now in this particular project, I'd like to use the GPU engine. So let me go ahead and switch to the GPU. And once I do that, I get this three dotted icon right next to it, which if I click on, I get this drop down menu which allows me to choose what uh, GPU devices to include into my rendering. And this, uh, so in the, in the machine that I'm working on right now, I have two graphics cards. Um, so I'd like to use only one of those for my rendering and then the other one, I'm going to just uh, keep off the rendering because I, I'd like the other graphics card to take care of my monitors and this way I'll make sure that my SketchUp viewport would not get any lag or it won't slow down at any time. All right. Also, right at the top of the list, I get to choose if I'd like the CPU to be involved in the rendering as well. Now, if I go ahead and enable this option, this is what we call hybrid rendering. So now the GPU CUDA code that we are using from the GPU rendering engine is going to be executed on the CPU. And this way the CPU would be treated as just an additional GPU device. This is great for several reasons. First, it just speeds up uh, the rendering, which is always great. And uh, second, it, it gives us a certain amount of flexibility. For example, if I have a GPU uh, setup scene that I'd like to, to take with me and show it to a client, for example, on a laptop, and this laptop does not have, uh, let's say it doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU or it doesn't have a GP GPU at all, 
I'll still be able to render my scene just using this CPU mode and, uh, uh, and the hybrid rendering. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to do is make sure that my uh, interactive mode is switched on because I'm still in my look development phase and I'd like to render interactively. And since, uh, since I'm starting with setting up my lighting, I usually like to use the material override option. Uh, I make sure I do that in the, in the light setup stage because this way I can specifically focus on the lighting part. So if I have any materials already being set up in the scene, I'm gonna go ahead and override them with uh, just a grayish material and this way I'll focus on my lighting. All right, so let me start the interactive renderer here. Okay. So now you can see that everything is being covered with this grayish material, except for the glasses of the building. And that is because if I go to my materials tab right here and find my glass material, under the material options, the can be overridden option is switched off. This means that this material, this particular material would not be uh, overridden by the material override. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, when I'm setting up my lighting, I still like to, to see how the lighting is gonna illuminate the interior of the house. And this would help me uh, with my lighting decisions. All right, so now if I go under my light tab, you can see that I have only one light source and that is the, the sunlight. So I can just go ahead here under shadows and just change the time of the day. I can try maybe early in the morning or perhaps maybe late afternoon or maybe I can just uh, stick with uh, the noon time, maybe around 1.30ish, see what that looks like. I think I like this one the best. Also, while I'm here uh, tweaking my sunlight, I can tweak my sky model too. So I can choose a different sky model here and they're, they're all going to give me slightly different results. So I can go for maybe the uh, CIE clear sky model or uh, the overcast sky model if I'd like to make a cloudy scene maybe. But I think I'd like the the Hossack Sky model the best and also it happens to be the most accurate of them all. So let's just uh, stick with the Hossack Sky model. Also there is another cool thing that I'd like to show you uh, guys. Now if you like to work in the compact asset editor mode, which means I don't have this expanded and I have it just like that. Uh, while, we, uh, while you're in your light tab, uh, now we have this icon right uh, in front of the name of the light source. And this icon is actually a switch toggle that en enables, allows you to switch off and on your light sources this way. Also, we get this number here, which uh, controls the intensity of the light source and also the color of the light source right here. So you don't have to expand this to tweak those settings. Now you have them right, right here directly in your lights list, which is very convenient, by the way. So if I click on the color swatch here, for example, I get this brand new color picker. Uh, this, the color picker has been completely redesigned. And now we have the previous and current colors, for example, as you can see here, I can switch back and forth. Now, if I click on the, on the current color swatch right here, I get to save it right here. So I can, I can save many color swatches. This way I'll, I can build my very own color palette if I'd like. Also, uh, we get to choose the range uh, of the RGB values. They can go from uh, 0 to 1 or 0 to 255. Either way we prefer. Also, we can choose uh, the color space here. We can go for the screen sRGB gamma corrected color space or for the linear 
rendering color space. All right, so let me just uh, go back to neutral white color. And now I like the, the, how the lighting turns out to be, but I think I prefer to have some clouds in the, in the sky. Uh, I think it's gonna make a much more interesting picture. So how, how can we do that? Now that's very easy, I can show you. We can use an image and, uh, and just put the image in the background. So if I go under my render settings here and then under the environment tab, right now in the background, I have the V-Ray sky plugged in. I know it's right here because I can see it in my uh, V-Ray frame buffer. All right, so I can just go ahead and clear this sky and just use an HDR image instead. But I also, before I do that, I'd like to use the, the V-Ray sky still for my uh, global illumination. So what I can do here is just copy this, uh, my V-Ray sky, go to environment overrides, ena enable my global illumination or skylight here, and just paste paste it right here. And this way I get the exact same image. Now I can go ahead and just clear this texture from here. And it turned black because right here I have black color. But instead of using this black color, I'm just going to use a texture. So let me just go ahead and select bitmap. And I have this environment.hdr texture here that I can load. Let's just uh, give it a second for it to load. And right here in the preview, window, I can see that my texture is actually a spherical panorama, which tells me that I need to go under texture placement and make sure that the type here is set, instead of being 2D by default, I need to set it to environment and make sure that the mapping is set to spherical. This way, I'll ensure that my image, okay, what did I, okay, my image is, uh, is going to be displayed uh, correctly in my V-Ray frame buffer. Now I see the image is uh, it's displayed correctly, but it's rather dark. So an easy fix for that is just to bump up this intensity multiplier. So let's boost it up to let's uh, let's try 45. See if that's gonna do it for us. And that looks much much better. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with the, with the, how the lighting looks like so far. So let's go ahead and disable the material override, override and start working on some of the materials in the scene. So I can just uh, do that. Now you can see that I've already started doing that and I have already set up a couple of materials here, for example, for the roofs, the roof materials and uh, some of those pipes here. But we still need to set up uh, the materials for the um, walls of the house here and also the ground. Now, before we do that, I already noticed uh, one issue in my scene and I see that this part, this geometry here uh, renders black, which means that something is, is, uh, must be wrong here because I'm pretty sure this is not supposed to be black color. So let's go ahead and investigate what's, uh, what's happening with this. So this is the geometry that it seems to be having trouble with this. So if I go under materials here, I can just okay, go to my materials tab first. All right. Okay, so this material right here is the one that is applied to this piece of geometry. And I can see even here in the preview window that it's black. So there must be something wrong. So if I go under my diffuse mass map right here, I can see this warning triangle telling me that the texture that is, um, that is part of this material, it's nowhere to be found, it's gone. So that is why uh, it just renders black because the diffuse color uh, is just black. So 
we can easily fix that if I just go ahead and use the browse button here and just find the missing texture and just relink it this way. We can do that and it's gonna work just fine. But this is a small project with just uh, several objects that I have to take care of. But in a bigger project with hundreds of objects and maybe thousands of um, materials, this is gonna be a very daunting and time consuming task to just uh, go through every single problematic uh, material and just relink textures and do stuff like that is just going to be a, a big mess. So that's why in this release of V-Ray for SketchUp we have uh, created a new tool that can help you with problems like that. So if you go under extensions here and then V-Ray we have this file path editor tool now which we can use to uh, solve problems just like that. So let me just go ahead and open it. Now this is the, the file path editor tool where we can we get all of our items here, uh, either uh, you know uh, texture maps that we have in our materials or and even the uh, proxy objects also are going to show up here. So every all of the assets that you have in your scene, they're all going to show up. Uh, conveniently in one place here and we can group them by uh, you know their directory or state or type or whatever now right in front of the name of those uh, items here or those assets well, we get square and it's either going to be green yellow or red so this is their state so the green ones are fine they are just uh, okay there is nothing wrong with those uh, items but we get a yellow item and this one says embedded here. What that means is that this texture is still loaded in SketchUp's bitmap buffer. So while you're rendering, uh, it would appear here that there is nothing wrong with the texture. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't notice a problem with it. But then once it disappears from the SketchUp bitmap buffer, um, let's say you close your SketchUp and you reopen it again, then the bitmap is going to be flushed and this texture is going to turn from yellow to red and it's going to be permanently gone. So that's not good. So if you have textures like that, there isn't a way to fix them. And we can use this icon right here, which says archive and repath. So what this does is it's going to ask me where is my assets folder? And once I, I set the path to my assets folder, v -ray for, what V-Ray for SketchUp would do is find this uh, texture and just make a copy in my assets folder and re-link re re to this new assets folder. So this way is going to fix the texture. And as you can see, now it turned green. Now we have only one problematic texture and this one is missing completely. This is the one that is uh, that we have right here. So we can fix this one very easily just by using the repath option here. So I can just click on the repath option. It's just uh, and just look for the missing texture. So I let's just go ahead and find it and just relink to this uh, new location and you can see that it turned green again and now we can see it in the uh, V-Ray frame buffer. So this is the file path editor, it's very very nice tool. Alright, so the, the next thing I'd like to do here is uh, to set up a material for the walls uh, of uh, the walls of the house. So uh, let me just go ahead and use the V-Ray for SketchUp material library. I, uh, if you guys don't know, you can, you can ex turn on the material library or expand this arrow right here and you get uh, access to the V-Ray for SketchUp material library which contains uh, a lot of materials and they're split into different categories. So I can just go ahead here and just use the bricks category, for example, and just make this a little bit bigger. 
and just select a brick material that I like to use for, for the uh, walls of my house. I think I'm gonna go with this bricks weather material so I can easily just drag and drop it into my materials list like that. Okay. And let me just zoom in a little bit so we can see better. Okay, and just select uh, my walls and just apply this material to it. All right, now the next thing I'd like to do is change the size of the material because I think, yeah, it's just 25 centimeters right now. It's probably not enough. I'd like to make it a little bit bigger. Let's try two by two, see what that looks like. I think I like the size of it right now, but as you guys noticed, uh, we have some issues and some stretching right here. And also something is wrong in this area as well. Uh, so this tells me that we have problems with the UVs um, of our model. So there are many ways to, to fix the, the UVs uh, through different extensions that you can get in the in the SketchUp warehouse right here. But as of this release of uh, V-Ray for SketchUp, we have implemented our own tool for fixing UV issues like this one. So if we select um, the, the object that we'd like to fix the UVs, for example, the, the walls here, I can go ahead and uh, right click on the object and we get this V-Ray UV tools now. And there are different UV tools that we can use. We have triplanar projection or spherical uh, projection, different types of, of projections. So let me just go ahead and use the triplanar projection world and see if that's gonna fix uh, my problem. And as you can see, uh, right now, it's straightened up all of the, the stretched UV problems here. So that worked out really good for us. All right. Now, the next thing I'd like to do in, in, uh, in this scene is set up a material for the ground. So let me just go ahead and focus on the ground here. And uh, we can, again, I, I'd like to use the material library a lot. So let me just go ahead and just look for a material, a grass material in particular, that's what I'm looking for. So I can just select the ground category here and just browse through. Okay, there are multiple grass materials here. I'd like to use this first one. So again, track and drop, select uh, the, um, the ground and just apply the material to it. All right. And again, the tiling of the material appears to be too, too um, small. So I'd like to try something bigger, maybe five by five, let's see. Yeah. So this material looks great. I, I like it a lot, I think. Yeah, I, I, I think it's um, it's exactly what I'm looking for. But it would look even better if we have an actual grass sticking out of the ground because this material looks a little bit too flat for my liking. Now we can easily do that by using uh, V-Ray 4, for example. And that is this, uh, this icon right here. So we can select uh, the object, the ground in this example, and just use the V-Ray 4 to create grass. Now I've already done so, so we, uh, for, for the sake of speeding up the, the process. So if I go under my geometries, that's where uh, my V-Ray 4 is. And right now is just disabled. So let me just go ahead and enable that. And here you can see the settings that I use. Uh, you can play with the settings and just create different types of grass, uh, longer or shorter. Just there is a lot of settings that you can tweak here and achieve just different results. So this is the, the grass created with the V-Ray 4. 
All right. All right, so the next thing I'd like to do is set up a material here for the, um, for the pathway. So let me just go ahead under my materials tab again. And this time I'd like to create a generic V-Ray material. So I can just uh, click on add material and then choose generic. All right, so I can uh, go ahead and um, apply this new generic material to the pathway. Okay, now instead of just using color here, I'd like to use a texture. So let me just go ahead and select a bitmap. And I happen to have this gravel texture that I'd like to use here. So let me open it. All right, great. Now, again, the, um, the tiling seems to be a little bit off. So let's try something maybe yeah, three by three is probably good enough and we can use this texture uh, to create our pathway now this also seems to be too flat so I can use this uh, texture and just displace it use the displacement to to make actual uh, little rocks now if I go under maps here, I have the displacement option right here. And as of this release of V-Ray for SketchUp, displacement is now supported on the GPU. And if you guys remember, we're still rendering on the GPU, so we can take advantage of this and just use it to our benefit. So let's go ahead, switch on the displacement, and I'm going to use uh, the same texture that I use for my diffuse in my uh, displacement slot right here. Also, uh, let's just bump up the amount a little bit. Uh, maybe I can just lower down the subdivision level just for the sake of speeding things up a little bit. So maybe just half this. All right. Okay, let me just start the renderer. Okay, let's just uh, give it several seconds to generate all this uh, geometry here on the pathway. And there we go. As you can see now we have this displaced pathway and it looks much more interesting and much better than um, before. So, uh, so we can use the, the displacement under GPU now. Also, if you don't have a texture map to use for your displacement on you or, or if you don't like to use a texture map you can procedurally create your displacement and there is a new procedural texture to do that in uh, in uh, this release so if we go here instead of just using a bitmap we can go under 3d textures and the noise b is a new noise texture that is uh, being included in uh, version 3.6 of V-Ray so here we have a uh, different type uh, we can change the type of the noise from regular to fractal for example and just bump up the iterations to just introduce more detail we can change uh, the size of, of the, the noise also play with the contrast and this way we can just procedurally uh, create something interesting and just use this for our displacement map instead all right now let me just switch off the displacement for now. We don't need it in our look development. It's just going to slow things down a little bit. All right, so the next thing I'd like to do, let's just, before I do anything, let's just switch back to the render camera. Okay. And just uh, render the image just to see what we're dealing with, how it looks like uh, so far. move that up a little bit all right so our image looks pretty much great I like I like the way it looks so far but I think it's gonna look much better and much more natural if there is uh, some sort of um, vegetation around it maybe some trees or bushes some flowers maybe I think it's gonna it's gonna look much better now I do have a layer here uh, 
with some vegetation scattered around that I previously prepared. So let me just go to my layers and just enable this uh, layer because currently it's just not visible. So I can just go ahead and turn it on. And here you can see that I've put several trees in the background and some bushes in the in the foreground. Now, just because we turned on all this uh, new geometry here in the scene, uh, it became a little bit darker. So let me just go to the render settings and then under camera, I can just uh, go one step lower on the exposure value and see if that's gonna look better. Yeah, and I think it does. So let's just stick with that. So now the scene looks much more natural and uh, this is very easily done. So I have just several proxy objects, maybe about three or four different proxy objects of trees and bushes and flowers. And I just, if you look here, I just scattered them around the scene just on totally randomly. And the way I did that, there are multiple ways to do that, but um, the way I did that is just by using a scattering tool that I got from the SketchUp extension warehouse. And this scattering tool is called Ray Tracer. Also, I used after that uh, one of the Chris Fomer scale and rotate tools to just introduce a little bit of uh, variation among those scattered proxies. All right, so there is also another thing that I'd like to show you guys here. And this is um, while we're on the topic of proxies, let me just stop that for, for a second. Now, if I go ahead and select uh, those proxies right here and just go under my geometry tab, okay? This is the, the proxy that we have selected, all right? So now, as this release of V-Ray for SketchUp, we get uh, some additional stuff regarding proxies. So here in our proxies, we can uh, now choose a different preview type for our proxy. So we get to choose, uh, we can choose proxy preview, for example, and this is gonna show us what those proxies look like. We can also display the whole mesh, although we have to be careful, that's, we, that's why we have this warning triangle right here, because if our proxy mesh is just too dense, it might significantly slow down our SketchUp viewport. And if we have just enough, um, you know, big, big um, uh, proxies, then we might even crush SketchUp. So that's why we have to be careful here. We can also display them as a bounding box if we'd like. Uh, just like that, or just as points. Uh, you know, we, we have different options to choose from. And as of this release of V-Ray for SketchUp, uh, there is animation that is now supported in proxies. So we can import animated proxies, in other words. And that's why we have these options right here. So if our proxy happens to be animated, we can choose uh, either to, to have the animation off or on from here. And if we expand this, we also get to choose the playback type from loop to uh, either it's gonna be looping or just playing one time. We can choose the playback speed and the scatter offset. Uh, all right. Uh, let me show you, I do have a video here that I'd like to show you with animation that has been rendered directly here in SketchUp. And this animation contains several animated proxies. So you see what I'm talking about clearly. Okay. Okay, let's just play this animation. All right, so this is a daylight animation that has been rendered directly here in, in V-Ray uh, for SketchUp. So here you can see that those proxy objects, the trees have, uh, are animated and they just move around. Uh, so you can achieve stuff like that with animated proxies. All right. Okay, so uh, now our scene is pretty much finished. But I think we can add a little 
a little something more to just make it look a little bit better and um, right now it just looks too um, flat to me so maybe we can introduce a little bit of depth by adding uh, some atmosphere so as of this release of V-Ray for SketchUp, Aerial Perspective is now supported on the GPU, so we can take advantage of the Aerial Perspective option. Now, let's go under uh, Render Settings here, and there is a new tab here called Volumetric Environment, and Aerial Perspective naturally has moved to the Volumetric Environment since it makes much more sense to, to be there. So let's go ahead and enable it. And uh, the aerial perspective allows us to create uh, fog effects and basically volumetric effects. And it's very, very fast and easy way to just introduce a little bit of atmospheric depth in your images. Also, as of this release, there is uh, a new type of of uh, environment fog type of effect. It's called environment fog right here. And it's much more accurate uh, than the aerial perspective. Uh, also, it allows us to do many more things, uh, such as, uh, for example, we can create complicated effects such as God rays uh, and many types of, of volumetric effects and many types of fogs, uh, stuff like that. So now it's supported in this. Um, Environment fog effect is now part of V-Ray 3.6 for SketchUp, so I encourage you to test it out. I think this is um, pretty much what our scene looks like so far. We can tweak it even more, but for right now, I think uh, it looks good enough. So the next cool thing I'd like to show you guys uh, is the VR scan material, which is now supported in V-Ray 3.6 for SketchUp. The VR scan material allows us to use photorealistic materials scanned with the Chaos Group's material scanning technology right inside our SketchUp projects. So we do have a rather big material library of pre-scanned materials online. So let me show you how you can access it. So if you go to your browser and go to uh, our webpage, chaosgroup.com, right at the top here, we have this uh, downloads button so if you click on it all right and then once you're in in the downloads uh, page you get to choose from two tabs either you, you want to download some software or the VR scans and if you click on the VR scans button you get access to the VR scans material library which you can browse and uh, there is a lot of materials included in it more than 650 I think so far and it's continuously growing. So there is about 24 pages of materials currently. So uh, you can just browse and choose, or if you know what you're looking for, you can use some of those filters here to help you find it easier. Like uh, you can filter by material type or material color, uh, stuff like that. Also, if you click on one of those materials, you get a little bit more information about the material here. You also get to uh, look at it from a closer view. So once you are happy with the way it looks, you can just click on the download button and just download it on your hard drive. And this way you can use it. Now, uh, let me go to SketchUp. And I do have a scene here uh, that I'd like to set up a couple of uh, VR scans material in it. So let's just go ahead and open this scene. I can just go to my scenes here and just open it. All right. So in this scene right here, I'd like to set up a couple of materials for the floor and those carpets here uh, using the VR scans materials. First thing I'd like to do is just go to my floor camera I'm gonna go ahead and open my uh, assets editor. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger and just go to my render settings. I'm going to use, I'm going to be using the CPU mode this time. I'll switch on the interactive as well. 
Okay. And uh, the next thing I'd like to do is create a VR scan material. So the way you create a VR scan material is just by go to going to add material list here and just choosing VR scan from the list. Okay, so I seems like I've already created one, it's right here. Okay, so when you create a new VR scan material, this is pretty much what you get. And uh, the first thing that needs to be done here is just load a material right here. So I can just choose this browse button and go to my VR scan materials folder. And I, I've downloaded a couple of materials from the uh, VR scans material library. So let me choose one of those. I'll choose this one. Okay. And we have successfully loaded the material here. So right away you get several options here. For example, you can change the tiling factor. Also, you can change the color space of the material. You have some advanced options here. You can enable or disable the two-sided. This option is good for um, uh, if, you, if you're setting up materials for, for example, for curtains and stuff like that. Also, if the material is transparent, you can choose either this transparency is showing or not, stuff like that. Also, you have this information box right here that shows some useful information about the uh, actual uh, physical sample size of the material and um, stuff like that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, select my floor and just apply this material. Okay, I also need to start my um, interactive rendering just to be able to see what I'm doing. And here you can see that the material has been applied to my uh, floor. Also, we get to manipulate the the orientate the position of this material if we go under texture placement. Right here, we can just choose different. Um, uh, UV repetition, tiling, and uh, offset, stuff like that. We can just, uh, in my case, particularly, I'd like to change the rotation of the material. I'd like those lines to go straight down. So let's just rotate it by uh, 65 degrees. Okay. And I also like the tiling of the material to be bigger. So I can just go ahead and bump the tiling factor to 5. See what that looks like. Okay. I think that looks good. And that's the beauty of those uh, of the VR scanned materials because they are just ready to go. You just download them from the library, put them in your project and they just look fantastic in pretty much all kinds of lighting conditions that you introduce. You don't have to tweak anything. They just work. But let's say I'd like to have this wooden material to appear differently. I just, I, I'd like it to be uh, maybe lighter type of wood and also maybe less saturated. Now I can do that in the appearance row out here. So let me just close that off. So if I expand my appearance row out, I get this uh, gamma and saturation settings. And by default, they're just one and one. So if I just bump up the gamma a little bit, maybe to 1.5, uh, this material is naturally going to be uh, brighter, just like that. Also, I can maybe desaturate it a little bit, and this way, just by tweaking those uh, those settings a little bit, I get a, a totally different type of wood material preserving all the material properties and uh, the grain and everything in here, but it looks a little bit different. Okay, now the next thing I'd like to do is set up a material for the carpet. So let me go ahead and just switch to the carpet camera right here. Okay, and I'd like to add a new material, create a VR scan material like that. Load one of the fabric materials that I have here. Okay. Let's select my carpet. 
right click, apply material to selection, start my rendering. And here you can see that I have my fabric material already applied to my carpet object. Now again, the, the tiling seems to be just too big. So I'm just going to uh, set the tiling factor to 10. See what that looks like. All right. And I think this looks much better. Now, this material is just gray in color so I don't think it fits the mood of my scene so I'd like to change the color of this material now with the VR scans material you can do that so if you go under the appearance pro out here we get filter color and paint color and if I use the filter color I'm going to tint not only the color of the material but pretty much uh, everything in it that's uh, that includes also the reflections so but I don't want to tint the reflections of my material I just like to change its color so I can use the paint option uh, the paint color option here so let me just go ahead and expand that I'll switch it on and right now it turned white because my paint color is set to white so let's go ahead and choose just a bluish color like this one for example and see what that looks like and there we go we can um, easily change the color of the material just by using the paint color option here and everything in this material all, all of its uh, uh, properties would stay the same this material will behave exactly as its original as the, the gray one but it's going to be blue. Now, instead of using a flat color here, we could also use a texture map, for example. So I can, uh, if I click here, I can just choose a bitmap texture, or I can use one of the procedural textures. For example, this gradient texture is new to V-Ray 3.6, so we can use this gradient texture and just set up some, grad, uh, some uh, gradient ramp here from different colors and this way just get some variation. But in this case, I'd like to use just a bitmap. So let me just go ahead, my assets folder and use this triangular pattern bitmap that I have. All right. And here you can see we can easily uh, achieve different types of uh, carpets or different materials just by using combination uh, of those settings. Now, since VR scan materials work perfectly well with V-Ray materials, uh, we can combine both of those materials and use uh, and use them together. So, if I go ahead. Let me show you how we can do that. So if I go ahead and create a blend material here, for example, uh, as my base material, I'd like to use the carpet material that we already created. So let's just find it here in the list. All right. And I'd like to add a cold layer here. My cold layer, we can use any just uh, regular V-Ray material. I've we can make one from here from the V-Ray library uh, which I've already created several of those so let me just use one of those and for the blend amount here if we move the blend amount slider here we just choose how much do we see from the, the base material or the cold material but instead of just using a flat color, color for this let's just use uh, a texture map so let's go ahead and select bitmap here. And I happen to have this um, black and white texture map that I'd like to use, this one. So everywhere there is black is going to be the carpet material and everywhere there is white is going to be uh, the out of V-Ray material that we have. So I can simply apply this material to 
to my uh, carpet object and as you can see we get uh, a blend between a VR scan material and just a regular V-Ray material using V-Ray blend. All right now next thing I'd like to do here is just go to my render camera and uh, I'd like to show you uh, another cool thing before we before we finish off for today. So if I select my wall material here in the background, uh, I can go ahead and uh, open up the maps rollout here. And under displacement, if we switch it on, we have a new type of displacement uh, available in V-Ray 3.6 for SketchUp. And uh, this new type of displacement is called 2D displacement. And the difference between normal displacement and 2D displacement is that 2D displacement is performed under uh, in texture space, which means that if you have a very detailed uh, texture map that you'd like to displace with very fine displacement, this is a very neat option that you can use for this. So I'd like to use this option and just uh, select uh, this bricks bitmap texture that I have and just use it to displace my uh, wall and create some bricks on the wall. All right, let's, uh, let's render it out to see what it looks like. All right, so let's just draw a region here for the sake of speeding things up a little bit like that. So you can see, you can easily create um, brick walls like this way also. All right. And lastly, before we wrap it up for today, I'd like to show you something cool, guys. Uh, so if we go under render settings here, and if I go ahead and switch off my interactive mode, as of this release of uh, V-Ray for SketchUp, we get the denoiser uh, render element uh, with a toggle switch right here, very conveniently uh, right uh, in the renderer tab. Before you had to go on the render elements and just click here and add the denoiser from here. But right now it's just very conveniently located here where you can switch it on and off very easily. So let's say I'd like to uh, switch it on and just uh, render just this region of my scene. All right. Okay, I have very low settings for this region. Okay, so right now, this is the original rendering and this is the rendering with the denoiser applied. We get it under the effect result tab right here. This is the, the one with the denoiser applied. So if we go to the denoiser settings here, I'd like to show you something pretty cool that is new in this release. We get this denoising presets here that we, you, we can choose from. So uh, there are three presets, mild, default, and strong. And also we have a custom uh, preset where you can just uh, specifically type in the strength and radius parameters. So if I go ahead and select the mild preset, and if I'd like to apply, the, apply it, I can just click on this update button right here, and it's going to update right in my V-Ray frame buffer. I don't need to re-render the scene or anything like that. So I try the mild preset, for example, I don't like the way it looks. I can go ahead, choose maybe the strong preset and just update again. And I'm going to see the result instantly in here. I don't need to re-render anything. All right, so to quickly recap, today we went through a simple workflow using some of the new features and improvements of V-Ray 3.6 for SketchUp to help us achieve faster and better results. We went over the new VPR or viewport rendering, the brand new hybrid rendering system using both the GPU and the CPU simultaneously. We've also 
taken a look at some new tools such as the UV, the UV tools, the file path management tool and the new color picker. We used some of the new procedural noise and gradient textures. Also, we took advantage of the displacement and aerial perspective, which are now supported on the GPU. On top of that, we took a closer look at the new VR scan material and the material library. We quickly set up a couple of materials to see how the scan materials work and behave in reality. We have taken it a step further by modifying and customizing the appearance of the scan materials to achieve different look, preserving all of the physical properties of the scanned materials. Now, as a special offer, you can download and try the VR scans library for free for a period of 90 days. You could also get additional 20% discount if you get an annual subscription to the VR scans material library. All right. Feel free to check out our resources hub page at chaosgroup.com slash resources where you can find information about pretty much anything related to VRA such as documentation, video tutorials, past webinars and many more. Also make sure to check out our website and, you and YouTube channel Chaos, Chaos Group TV. You can find a lot of videos and tutorials and stuff like that on there and learn about V-Ray this way. Thank you for being part of this webinar today and have a great day. Thank you so much, Faiso, for the stunning renderings and the great demo. Um, thank you for joining us today. And I want to remind you to visit uh, our page at novage.com where you can find all the V-Ray solutions for SketchUp, 3ds Max, Rhino, Revit, Maya, you get the gist. And also we have the VR scans. So, um, you know, check it out. And next week's webinar will be about title block border in Vectorworks 2018. And to rewatch today's webinar, you can uh, go on the Novages YouTube and Vimeo channels and I'll upload it immediately after uh, I'm wrapping up this session. So have a great day, everybody, and see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye.